I heard that positions were going to be cut, so I came to find out what was going on. And I will admit, I don't know all of the meetings and everything that I probably should have paid attention to, and going forward, I definitely will. Last year, Cedar School had cuts in special ed. I understand these are hard times, but it seems like, looking at this again this year, positions, sped, 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 sped. Everything I heard last night was we're trying to make the least effect on the least amount of students, which is fine, but the sped students are the students that need the help the most, and when you cut their services, it affects them 20 times more than a regular student who, you know, can handle this, the day. I can't imagine, and I'll say, my son's in fourth grade. He's moving on. I couldn't imagine him having made it this far without half of the people that I see in this room. They have carried him through. I don't, I don't know how they're going to function. My son was affected directly last year by the cuts made. His reading specialist was cut. She was a wonderful person. My son was in third grade and stuck at a mid first grade level. She was the first reading specialist that broke him through and made progress. And I was shocked when I found out she was going to be let go. And I understand budgets, I understand it. But yet, the kids that it's hurting, what, what happens to my son? What about him? And if you're spending money on computers, my son needs the reading specialist, not so much the computer. I saw the MCAS scores. That's great that we made improvements. My son's never going to pass MCAS, certainly, if he's still reading at a mid-first grade level in high school. If you don't catch these kids at a young age, they're going to check out, first of all. Forget, you know, if they only have a very short span of time where they still are confident in themselves and believe they can do it. Once they check out and say, I'm stupid, that's it. You're, they're done. You're never going to get them back. And then what's going to happen to them? I'm not going to let that happen to my son. I was lucky enough to be able to pay that reading specialist on my own time to continue his progress because I'm not going to let him fall behind. But not everybody can do that. And yes, he had another reading specialist this year. Her workload has doubled because that there's not two reading specialists and now if you're going to lose another one, I'm afraid. I'm afraid for his future because the economic system, it's not going to change. Next year, we're going to be standing here again, and you're going to have to make cuts again. And where are you going to make them? I've, two years in a row, it's been sped. Is it not going to be sped next year? Yes, he's moving on, but his learning disorder is never, he, it's never going to go away. He needs to learn how to learn with it. He needs support. I've been told over and over again. I keep saying, how can he move on? And I keep being told that you know, with services, he'll be able to access the curriculum, he'll be able to do it. But if there aren't any services, how is he going to, he's going to get lost. And, and there's lots of kids just like him behind that are moving on and through the system. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid for him and I don't know how I'm going to get him through. These kids are, you know, it's an uphill battle for them every day. And every cut that's made makes that hill closer and closer to a mountain. And then when they get discouraged and they don't think they can do it anymore, then what? I mean, I, that's all I had to say.